In this screencast, we are going to solve a particle in a two-dimensional box by using the mathematical technique called separation of variables. This system is an extension of a particle in a one-dimensional box, where now we're going to allow our particle to travel both in the x and in the y directions. So let's go ahead and define our system. We'll call the length of the x dimension of our box L1, and we'll call the length of the y dimension of the box L2. And just as we did previously, we'll define our potential term to be zero everywhere inside the box so that our particle is free to move around, and we'll define the potential to be infinity at the walls and everywhere outside of the box. This ensures that our particle cannot escape. Because our particle can now move in both the x direction and the y direction, there are going to be two contributions to the particle's kinetic energy, and our Schrodinger equation will have two kinetic energy terms. There will be one for each axis. The Schrodinger equation then becomes this partial differential equation shown here. Since the particle can move in two dimensions, we know that the resulting wave function psi is going to be a function of both x and y. In order to solve this partial differential equation, we're going to use a mathematical technique called separation of variables. We're essentially going to assume that our wave function takes on the form psi of x, y is equal to a function of x multiplied by a function of y. You'll often see this written in the following notation, where the function of x is denoted as a capital X, and the function of y is denoted as a capital Y. Our total energy of the system is then the sum of the energy associated with motion in the x direction, e sub x, and in the y direction, e sub y. So for now, let's assume psi takes on this form and plug this back into the Schrodinger equation. Let's start by taking the second derivative of our new psi expression with respect to x. Since the y function of our expression does not depend at all on x, it can actually be factored out of the derivative. This simplifies the math significantly, and it allows us to turn this from a partial derivative into an ordinary derivative. We can then do the same thing for our second term in the Schrodinger equation. With these substitutions, we now have the following expression for the Schrodinger equation. Let's divide both sides by functions x, y, and rearrange the resulting equation into the following. The idea here is to get our equation in a form that has a constant term on one side of the equation, and then we're going to see if this allows us to determine specific solutions for our functions x and y. Let's take a closer look at this first term, which again is completely independent of y. In other words, if y is varied, only the second term can change. But we know that the sum of these two terms is equal to a constant. So since this first term cannot change, this also means that the second term cannot change if we vary y. What this implies is that both terms are in fact equal to a constant. And this fact allows us to rewrite each of these terms in the following way. By substituting e equals e sub x plus e sub y, we've set each term equal to the constant minus 2me over h bar squared, where the corresponding energy values are used. We can rearrange these expressions slightly into the following forms, and now they should start to become familiar. These two ordinary differential equations are the same as the one-dimensional particle-in-a-box Schrodinger equation, and therefore we already know the solutions. So that means our normalized x function is going to be the square root of 2 over L1 times sine of N1 pi x over L1, and our normalized y function is going to be the square root of 2 over L2, times the sine of n2 pi y over l2. We know that psi is just the product of x and y, so by multiplying these two functions together, we get our overall normalized solution to the two-dimensional particle in a box. Similarly, since we know e sub x and e sub y, and because the total energy is just the sum of these two, the total energy of the particle is then limited to the following values, with the two quantum numbers n1 and n2, independently taking on the values 1, 2, 3, etc. We have now solved for the wave function and allowed energies for a particle in a two-dimensional box using the mathematical technique separation of variables.